Hello, my name is James Studley, here again at Full Potential Learning Academy. Today, we'll be going over other modifier problems and how to correctly discern when to use an adjective or adverb in a sentence. Today, we'll be going over how to choose between an adjective and an adverb in a sentence. We'll be going over comparative adjectives and comparative adverbs and how to choose between them in a sentence. We'll be going over eliminating redundancy from adjectives and adverbs. And finally, we'll have some practice to help you cement your understanding of the lecture today. Remember not to mix up adjectives and adverbs and when to use them in a sentence. Adjectives should only be used to modify nouns, and adverbs should only be used to modify verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. We see this in the example below. I was impressed by how cogent his argument was presented. We need to change it to, I was impressed by how cogently his argument was presented in order to have the correct form of cogent as an adverb, not an adjective. Moreover, only adverbs can modify an entire sentence, as shown below. Clearly, the dust storm obscured the driver's vision. The adverb clearly describes the sentence and it makes it obvious that the dust storm was obscuring the driver's vision and that adverb modifies the whole sentence. Bear in mind to use adjectives and adverbs in the correct way in order to have the best way to have both modifiers work. Comparative adjectives and adverbs. When giving adjectives and adverbs the comparative form to compare things in a sentence, there are two forms to recognize. There are ER endings, and then there is the more slash most blank form to consider. We see this in the examples below and how to properly use them. For the first example, the suitcase was more light is wrong. It must be changed to the suitcase was lighter to have the proper comparative form. In the second sentence, please try to hold the baby gentler next time is wrong. It must be changed to must be more gently in the sentence in order to correctly have that comparative form. Finally, we have absolutes. Absolutes do not take any comparative form since you can't have more or less of an absolute, which is why more inevitable must be changed to inevitable in the sentence below. So that way we have a proper absolute. absolute. Understanding comparative forms is key to the practice ahead. But understanding them now allows you to visualize how to use them. Eliminating redundancy. A redundancy is the unneeded repetition of an idea. We see this with the modifiers below. With only seconds remaining to go, Michael sped quickly down the court. This is redundant because we don't need those extra modifiers to affect the sentence, so we trim down the sentence to correct it. With only seconds remaining, Michael sped down the court. By trimming down on modifiers, we correct the sentence itself and have trimmed it down so that way it reads correctly. Here is some practice to help you cement your understanding of the lecture today. Simply look through each sentence and correct any modifier problems you see below. Take a moment now to pause the video and try out the questions. And don't worry if you get the questions wrong, this is simply practiced. Good luck! If you haven't paused the video now, please do so now and try out the questions. We will be moving on in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here are the corrections from the previous questions from before. In the first sentence, the correction must be made of stronger turning into more strongly to have the proper comparative form in the sentence. In the next sentence, the adjective never must change to an adverb rarely since the use of never is illogical. In the third sentence, most must change to more since more is used to compare 
two entities and we're comparing one of two parents. Finally, weren't must change to were to correct for the double negative in the final sentence. These are the corrections from the previous questions. Don't worry if you made mistakes since the practice it was is what is important. Further practice with adjectives and adverbs allows us to understand them and know which modifier to use in a sentence. Additionally, by understanding why we use adverbs instead of adjectives in a sentence or vice versa, allows us to see the errors in test and writing firsthand and allows us to correct them to better improve our English. Our next lecture will focus on irregular verbs and which form of an irregular verb to choose in any sentence. Thank you for watching. Teach you next time. This material was referenced by the McGraw-Hill SAT Guide, Chapter 15, Lesson 12, Other Modifier Problems. Once again, thank you for watching. Thank you.